Evening, everybody. Um, this is our first Warrant Finance Committee uh, meeting. Uh, it's September 27th, 2021, at 6.03. The first order of business is the school supply. Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance. The United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Sorry, Dennis. And I apologize for my hat off. Gotcha. Uh, but I'm not wearing my old Trump hat, so we shouldn't have any emails or anything about my attire. <laughs> uh, with that being said, the first thing I'd like to do is welcome everybody. Uh, we have five new members this year. Uh, and I'd like for everybody to induce, introduce themselves for those of you that doesn't know everybody. Go ahead, Ronald, start on you. You're going to start on me? Yep. You're picking on me, Dennis? Yep. Raw and Waterhouse. I've been on uh, Warren Finance now for, I don't know, about eight years. Um, retired and kind of fed up. I'm done. I'm Bernard Broder. Um, I'm new. Look forward to getting to know everybody and working together. Joyce Bakshi, new to this committee. Glad to be here. <clears throat> As you all know, Dennis Long. That's all I'm going to say about myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leslie Berlan, this is my first year on this committee. And I'm Tom McGurdy. This is my first year on the committee. Tucker Pearson, I was formerly an alternate, and I'm a voting member this year. Joseph Rumber, I'm, I'm an alternate, and this is my first year. <clears throat> So the first point of business is to elect a chair. I nominate Dennis Long. Second. Anybody else? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Next thing is to elect a vice chair. Can I have nominations, please. Nominate Leslie Berlin. Second. Any other nominations? Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, the next thing is uh, a secretary. But before we, we make a motion on that, I, I'd like to give a little explanation of past practices uh, when it comes to the secretary. For many years, uh, many, many years, the Slutman uh, supplied the Warrant Finance Committee with a secretary, uh, which was Lorraine Yatton. And when she uh, stepped down from doing that, they hired somebody to come in and do the minutes for quite a few years. And then about 10 years ago, uh, the board decided um, that we could do the secretarial stuff ourselves in committee. So that's what we did until last year. I believe it was last year, wasn't it, Tucker? Um, Tucker brought this up and the board agreed that it's hard to be a secretary and participate in the meeting. Uh, so what we decided was, and we voted, uh, that the video would be our minutes of our meeting. So the secretary wouldn't have to uh, spend most of the time writing and not paying attention really to be a partake in the conversation, which I think is a good idea. It, it saves a lot of work. It saves a lot of, if anybody has any questions on how something ha happened, all they have to do is watch the video. And but with that being said, my technical skills are limited to what my grandchildren can show me what to do. Uh, I try very hard to 
send emails out to everybody and this and that, but there's sometimes there's things that need to be done um, that I'm not able to do. Them. And I've always had somebody that would help me out with this. Annie Murray was a great help in the past. He's a former member. Uh, Tom Gore was. So for limited services, I would like to see us have a secretary. Somebody I can go to and ask him to do stuff that I can't. So what's your thoughts? I agree. I, I, I agree that we the video should be our minutes. Um, and it, it's very difficult to take minutes yeah. and, and to participate. But I also understand um, that, that there are some functions that we do need a call it a secretary for. Right. Um, so I'm in complete agreement with the, the limited role. When there were minutes, I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? No, 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 I was finished. Right. When there were minutes, we, are they posted someplace or how are they made available? Yes, they were. They, they used to be on the town's <laughs> website. And but when we got the COVID stuff, things really it fell apart. Everything kind of fell apart. Uh, the committee obviously had a copy of the minutes for the next meeting. Uh, where where you can watch these meetings on either a pat or on YouTube. Uh, Lots of times, at least people that talk to me, it's easier to do that than it is to get on the town's website and find information sometimes. There's, there's also no bias in, um, with, with minutes. Uh, right. That you know, you watch the video, you see exactly what was said and what happened, where, um, you know, and everyone, everyone has a bias in taking minutes, and you're always going to get that little bit of. Um, whatever word you want to attach to it. Um, so I, th I think actually watching what what transpired, uh, I think is more beneficial. There's no two records of it, so there's no conflict between the two if you only have one, but I could certainly see where we tried it last year, Dennis, a lot of that gap of not having a secretary fell in your lap un unknowingly when we made that right. decision. You know. And we did the best we could do, yep. you know, or at least I did. Uh, what do you think, Joe? Are you going to pay the secretary? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to wear a skirt, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, think, I, I think Joe's not going to volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, would it have to be a secretary as a member of this group, or would it have to be somebody else? It would be a member of the, the committee. Is the chair open for a motion? Unless somebody else has something they want to say. I'd like to ask, I guess, um, one of the questions I have about using the video for your total record is if a question comes up about something, how do you know what date it was decided? And what the, dis you know, I, I've never heard of not having a written, how do we approve minutes from a previous meeting if we don't even review them? Well, we don't need to. Uh, you can review them if you want on the video, but the law is yeah. very clear that you can use the video for your minutes. You don't have to have a handwritten. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't call for the, the statute doesn't call for minutes. Excuse, it calls for excuse a me record. one minute. Virginia needs. Things happen. No voice. The audio went. Right. Joyce? 
Was there any issues like that last year? No, not that I know of. Everything was fine. I'm just, I'm just no, oh, it, you always know that the one that you want is going to be the one that has a glitch. Yes. You know, like no audio or no something like that. That's always going to happen. Would, would the board consider simultaneously recording our meetings? I'm fine with that. You're talking about audio recording? Yes. Yes. I don't have a problem with that. Right, that would suffice any issues. Yeah, I mean, we'd have two, uh, two now, things. Now, now, how are you going to record it? With a tape recorder. With a tape recorder. Do we <laughs> have a tape recorder available for our utilization? Yeah. Who would like to be in charge of said recording? <laughs> well, would. I think that would not again would, would fall to our secretary. Uh, ultimately, I guess it would be the chair's responsibility, but um, so that being said, it sounds like we'd like to have a secretary, or at least I would, uh, but not bury him in work. Tom? Uh, would it make sense to have written down the votes? Oh, yes. If we take a vote, to have a written record of yep. that. Um, but the, the conversation and dialogue around that, um, I guess we could rely on the video yeah. and or the backup. And, that, and that's what we've done in the past. Okay. Uh, right. Anything that we're voting on, it's all been recorded in okay. writing. All right. And then it goes to the town administrator and she does her work, Joyce. I, I would suggest in that case, I agree with Tom, uh, from past experience, you have a motion sheet on the table because when you take actual minutes you need who's there who's not here yeah. what motion was made did it pass fail or what was it is not necessary to have discussion uh, around it it's not necessary to have any of those things that sometimes you see minutes that are eight or ten pages long and only three motions were ever made at that particular meeting. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. And you're exactly right. When you and this is one problem we've had, I think, is the expectations of what the minutes are. <clears throat> what Joyce is 100% right. What the minutes should be is whatever actions was taken at the meeting. Um, not every word for word what Dennis Long said, because then it'd be 18 pages. You know, yeah. the discussion, and I notice on the other boards I've been on, uh, it's a planning board, for example, the, the intent of the minutes were always right, but there's always something that, I didn't use that word, I used that word. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, so that much detail, as far as I'm concerned, is, is a pain. And that's where the bias comes in. And that's where the bias comes in. Absolutely. Uh, so with that being said, I guess we will have a secretary and, and we'll just do the actions, record the actions of the, of the committee. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. yes. So I'll open up nominations for secretary. I'll nominate Joyce. Second. I don't hear Joe jumping up and down and saying he wants a job. <laughs> Uh, that choice, not shall we? Uh, <laughs> all in favor. And it's unanimous. Hey, then I have to warn you all that I put the, I did the, the agenda for this meeting and I already got the first thing wrong on it the day. I had to correct it by pencil. And I will tell you this, and I throw myself at the mercy of this committee. I've been working for three days to get my email I wasn't going to talk about that. In a oh, good. Choice. Because I have. My problem is I've lost my agenda already and haven't gone. Just, anywhere. I cannot. It now has my husband I got it. pulling okay. his hair out if he had any hair left, and he doesn't. So I will get it. I'll work on it. But if anybody needs me, as far as I'm concerned, until I get the warrant and finance email, use my email. 
Thank you for doing that. Um, Thank you. First thing is I try, and the, the committee voted to do this, uh, to run under these Robert's rules. Uh, I kind of, I passed that out, I think, uh, to everybody. Uh, the simplified version uh, seemed to work very well in the past. Uh, the alternates obviously aren't voting members uh, unless somebody's absent. And the way I've done it in the past is uh, alternate. If, if, if we need one of the alternates to vote, alternate meetings on the alternate to, to be able to vote. Um, with that being said, though, it's very important whether you're an alternate or not to voice your opinion, ask questions. Uh, and I will tell you that anything that I do as chair, uh, if anybody has any questions about it or procedural thing or whatever, I encourage everybody to uh, speak up because everybody on this committee has an equal voice. As a chair, all I'm doing is running the meeting, and I'm running the meeting the way this committee wants me to run the meeting. Uh, Excuse me. Go ahead. Just for clarity's sake, would you identify the alternate members of Warren Finance? Joe Ruma is one. And, and I believe, Bernie, you're an alternate. I don't think so. Okay. If I am, somebody needs to tell me. Okay. But I don't believe I we am. Need to, we need to make sure that, that uh, we have... I thought he was voted in. Uh, correctly identified <laughs> the exactly. seated board members yep. uh, as, you know, seated board members in the alternates as alternates. I'm not throwing any rocks at anybody nope. by any means. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of, you know. It's a procedural issue. That's, that's it. So if we don't know for sure, then you need to get in touch with uh, the town administrator to identify. Yeah, I will. Thank you. I'm I done. will. And I apologize for no problem. not knowing that. I, I, I thought Joe and, and, and Bernie was, but I could very well be wrong. I, I suspect if you were, st I'm sorry, uh, ahead, what's the procedure? Do you just, do you raise, raise your hand? hand? Yes, okay. I'll call on you, Tom. Very good. Um, I believe if you were a seated member, you were probably um, sworn in. Was that done? Mm -hmm. Well, alternates are appointed, not elected, correct? Uh, no. Alternates are are elected. They're, you're elected as well. And you'll be sworn in as an alternate. Oh, you okay. are? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I think, yeah, I think we need to check with yeah. the town administrator or review the town meeting, but. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you know, the, the, the copy that you got, Bernie, when you got sworn in. Right. Would say an alternate on I mean, it, if that's yep. what it is. I'll double check. It's possible. But I, but I can still, I'll check with. Anything's possible. Uh, the town administrator. Um, you see, I passed out uh, last year, or maybe it was two years ago now, I don't know. The Warren Finance Committee uh, created a mission statement. Uh, it was, I cheated quite a bit on that because I, I really got a lot of this from one of the school's miss, mission statement. I thought it sounded so good, so I thought it'd be good for us. Uh, so that's our mission statement. Give you a second to read it and see if you have any concerns. Because we can always change it. This is a new board and uh, I have a question to ask. What? That, that last cross, the cross out on the very bottom, that's gone, right? To the best of our ability? I might have crossed that out myself just to cover myself so that in case I was being lazy about something, I don't know. <laughs> Tom. 
uh, act on that same uh, last bullet, acting in the best interest of the town. Do you need meeting, or is it just the town? We represent the town meeting. Town meeting. Oh, okay. So you probably probably could do away with the word the in front of town. Okay. Because we we answer to town meeting. Okay. But you guys can look at this, and at our next meeting, we can. Okay. Um, it's something to work with. Well, it's interesting to know that. I, yeah. I, I didn't know as a yeah. that. No, so. we're accountable to the town meeting. That's, Very good. that's who elected us. And they're the ones that govern us. Um, okay. there, so is a, to the there is I a... I get it. <laughs> the ordinance, the creation of the Warren Finance Committee that was redone back in 2011. I apologize for not making copies of everything tonight, but my printer ran out of ink. So I was going to have all this stuff for you guys, but I, I don't have it. Um, but the Warrant Finance Committee ordinance was uh, redone in 2011, and it tells us what our roles and responsibilities are. Uh, we are a independent committee. We're not under the auspices of the selectmen. Um, we, the only, only one to have authority over us is the town meeting. I see. And obviously we try to work closely and respectfully with the board of selectmen and the town administrator, but uh, we work for them, and they're the ones that say who they want on it. And if we don't do things right, the way they see fit, then they'll put somebody else on it and not re-elect you. And I think that's very important. That we know that we're accountable to the town meeting. Okay. That's okay. why we're here right. to give them advice. Thank you, um, Dennis. Yes, I'm sorry, Joyce. Uh, in our mission statement. I might be confusing between what our responsibilities are and what our mission statement is, but shouldn't there be something saying that is, is our mission to review every article that is on the warrant and give an unbiased yay or nay on and, it? And that's in the ordinance. Uh, but that doesn't go in our mission statement. I don't know. I'm not. It that, doesn't matter. I'm not that technically. What it's else? in the ordinance. It's in the you ordinance. That form the committee. Yeah. What our responsibilities are. Very specific. The ordinance is very, very specific as to what the. Re <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we vote on the warrant. <coughs> All warrant articles, whether they're financial. Or, uh, whether it be through the planning office or uh, any warrant, <clears throat> we vote on all the articles. Uh, obviously, the finance end of it is the biggest impact. Um, but I also have this, and I don't have it for anybody else. We also develop and it might be in that his piece of paper here, Joyce, um, the purpose of the warrant finance. And this is more or less um, a guideline on the roles of the different um, people on the board, uh, how to deal with things. Uh, then we had standard operating procedures uh, so that everybody understood how the process worked. Um, the roles we've already discussed, really, with the chair and the uh, vice chair and the uh, secretary. But I'll read this and I'll make sure everybody has it for the next time we have a meeting. Uh, the committee meeting shall follow the abbreviated Robert's Rules of Order. The committee shall set its own agenda, coordinated by the chair. The committee shall make every effort 
to consult with municipal offices and officials as it deems necessary to fulfill its obligation to the town meeting. The committee shall present any legal questions to the town administrator to put forth to MMA via the chair. The committee shall conduct any and all business in public forum in strict adherence to the state of Maine's freedom of information. All alternate members shall have, shall have a voice at every meeting, even when not a voting member. The committee shall require five business days to review all warrants before taking a vote, with the exception of extraordinary circumstances. The committee shall strictly adhere to using the town's email server for communication regarding warrant and finance committee matters. The committee members must act as part of the committee body when representing the committee. Members must not act or claim to represent the committee without consent of the committee chair. This is kind of like, we did this so that everybody was on the same page on how we we're operating as a committee. Uh, and again, <coughs> this was last year, and when any committee comes up with a set of rules, it expires at the end of that fiscal year uh, because you got different members and they might want different rules. Uh, but I'll probably, what I do is, up, and this is one example I was talking about, a secretary. I'll probably give this to the secretary and I know with her wisdom she can scan it and send it out to everybody. Uh, that way there, before our next meeting, everybody can look at it and uh, pick it apart or whatever you want to do so that at our next meeting we can hopefully adopt, adopt this. And, and I think it, it, it really clarifies a lot of everybody going in different directions. Now, when it comes to the email, I think everybody is on there except for you, Joe. And I, I didn't explain it very well to you, Joe, when I was talking to you. How that Warrant Finance Committee emails works is it's a whole new account separate from your email. Okay, it goes through the town server and it's a whole separate account. So what you have to do is get a hold of Jennifer. She will sign you a password and a warrant finance committee number. And then you will receive all the emails like everybody else does. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can request hard copies of everything. Uh, which would be mailed to you uh, through the town administrator, where the town administrator would do that. Uh, they would mail hard copies if you don't want to use the email. It's completely up to you, Joe, how you want to do it. Uh, you want me to decide now? Well, you don't have to. No, I can, I can, why don't we, you want to just set up the email account, like what you with, with Jennifer, yeah. yeah. And uh, now, with that being said, as most of you should know, if my email went out at all, uh, my Warren Finance email isn't working. I have spoken to the town administrator a couple of times about it. Uh, she showed me up here that all my emails are there and everything. And on my computer, I have none. I have no history, I have nothing. She sent me a new password to change the password in the account and start over. Uh, that didn't work. I got a couple of emails from her and, and my old email. And when I set up the new one, it didn't work. So she thought it might be my laptop. So I had my daughter-in-law set up a 
account on a different device, and it still didn't work. So uh, until that gets straightened out somehow, uh, what I'll be doing is sending emails from my personal email to the Warrant Finance Committee server. So it will go to all the Warrant Finance Committee members. Uh, but when you send something out to somebody, I'm not so sure I'm going to get it. So I, I'm still fighting with this, and I just don't know what to do. Leslie. Yeah. Um, I was able to get into my account. However, there's 300 emails in, on, on my account in no chronological order. So the emails that were sent out about this meet, you know, setting up the meeting um, for us is buried in the middle of all of those emails from 2019, 2020, 2021. And unless I actually go through every single page to look for new ones, all right, I'll, uh... it's not, it's not, that's just not doable. Yeah, I'll, uh, Joyce. Um, Buck has had to go into After Five Hosting, which is the hosting mm -hmm. server part of, because it's webmail. We have webmail. There's mm -hmm. not email, I have webmail. And it's After Five is hosting. And he had to go in there, and they literally this morning sent us two pages of instructions on how to get in, create an app on your phone so you can just go to that app and you should be able to have your... Will it be in chronological be. order? You have <laughs> to set that up that way. I, I looked everywhere through all the different settings that I could find on that and I could not find a setting to change the order of the emails. That web server is not exactly friendly User friendly by any shape. No, I mean, I mean, I, I my, my personal feeling is that the selectmen are requiring us to use this. They should make it uh, user friendly. Um, we suggested a long time ago for another committee to use Gmail because all of us know how to use Gmail, but they didn't want to do that. Well, <coughs> on a previous committee, I actually had to drive over to the webmaster's house and give him my phone, which he had for several hours. And he set up the account for me, <coughs> gave me a special, it was like puppy dog something or other server, not, and it was just a different server. And when I would get an email, it would bark. But, you know, I was so grateful that he got it working. Uh, I didn't care that it, that it barked, I mean, I thanked him for at least giving me, but I think what I will do as secretary when Dennis says, okay, I want this to go out, until we are all on the same warrant, like I'm uh, warrant and finance number two at actonmaine.org, I will probably break rules, but I will send not only to that address, but to your address and it will be up to each one of you if you don't want business emails in your personal account delete them but until i know everybody is getting everything i'll send them to both addresses you know uh tom i i'm not sure what if you're w uh w and one I, I i thought you were it was actually the way we were elected in Oh. You were first, I was second, I okay. saw that. Um, but, you know, it's war uh, Warrant and Finance 1 at Acton, Maine. And I will also send one to your yeah. email address, your person. Hi. Dennis? We, we have had... Go ahead, Tom. Uh, given these issues, I think it's appropriate to send the town administrator notice that because of these issues with the email system we're having, that we're being forced to use alternative email until it gets fixed. And 
and I would I would I would document what these issues are and I would I would let them know that until they get fixed that we're forced to use alternative emails. Yeah. We can we can do that. I'll I'll get that with was, Joyce. That was done in the past. Yes. But at least they've been notified. So they've yeah. been notified several times oh, in the okay. past. Well, uh, we'll do it again. Know, again, they said, you know, it was, they were, supposedly they were talking about changing uh, the server, or, you know, the... Uh, hosting. Hosting, yeah. And uh, that never came to fruition. It fell through the crack. So uh, we can voice our concerns with the current uh, webmail uh, that we are supposed to use for all town business. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, you're barking in the wind. It doesn't mean we shouldn't. No, I didn't say we shouldn't. Yeah. I'm no, just saying. Right. Out of respect you know, to them. Out of respect, we got to do it. Exactly. Well, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, I don't know what to say. You know, it's out of my department. Uh, so we will um, have Joyce, or I will, uh, drop the town administrator an email with some of the concerns and see where it goes. That, that's the best we can do with that. Um, can I just, while well, before we go change, ahead, Baron. Um, I do not want any emails personal using my personal email related because should any issue arise, freedom of information requests and so forth, um, I don't want my personal email to become subject to scrutiny. So I want. Okay. If, if this doesn't work, then unfortunately I didn't get the information and you we'll get a hard copy. Find a way. Yep. But so please do not Good send point. me any personal emails related to the board so business. No board emails to your personal yep. account. You. That's yep. fine. Does anybody else feel that way? No, but I understand. I, I get his point. No, no, I appreciate point. it. Yeah, it's a good point, but yep. there's nothing in my emails. Yeah. <laughs> anyone does that. Um, in mine, it'll be messed up with Macy's. Uh, so we're all set up with that. Um, we did the municipal ordinance. We know where that is. Uh, the Board of Slutman's policy concerning the Warren Finance Committee. Uh, they developed a policy last year. Uh, called it the Warrant and Finance Committee policy. And I explained to them that they couldn't do a policy for the Warrant and Finance Committee because the Warrant and Finance Committee is a separate. So what they actually did was make a policy for um, their employees. For the last couple of years, anyway, uh, and historically this was always done, uh, the Warren Finance Committee tried to meet with the different departments uh, in sometime in November uh, just to have a conversation, see how things are going, what are they looking at, I mean, they're getting ready to do up their budgets, and uh, but the last two years, the slutmen have told their employees uh, they can't meet with us. Road commissioners, fire chief, transfer station superintendent. Uh, so that anyway, they decided they was going to write up uh, a policy when it comes to the Warren Finance Committee, which you can also look on the town's website under the policies, and it's there. And it says here, any member of the Warren Finance Committee may make a request for information of any department in town to the chair of the Warren Finance Committee. The Slutman have waived the need for the Warren Finance Committee to vote on said request. 
The chair of the Warrant Finance Committee shall then contact the town administrator and share the request of his or her fellow committee member. The town administrator will immediately begin working on the request and does not need to wait for slotman approval. Once the information is gathered, the town administrator will email all information requested to the entire Warrant Finance Committee, Board of Slotman, and the other department head that the information pertains to. If a Warrant Finance Committee member prefers to have a hard copy of the information, he or she can make a blanket request at the beginning of their term to the town administrator to have their documents mailed to them at home. The Board of Slotman encourages communications between the Warrant Finance Committee, their liaisons, and the various department heads and committee chairs within the town. This policy is intended to ensure all information and documents requested from any town department or committee are distributed to all members of the Warrant Finance. It is not intended to prohibit communications. In an effort to maintain transparency and abide by the freedom of information laws, meetings with department heads or committee chairs shall be held in a properly posted meeting where all members of the Warrant Finance Committee are afforded the right to attend. With that policy, they still said that we couldn't meet with the department heads. And we had members last year uh, go to department heads and ask for information, and the department heads were told they could not pass that on to the Warrant Finance Committee that we had to go through the town administrator, the town administrator would get us that information and give it to us. The, and, and, and the way they've done it the last few years, if you have questions, you submit the questions, and then they'll get you the answers. My issue with that has been, and I'll pick on the, two road commissioners. If you meet with the two road commissioners and, and say you have these uh, five questions for them, and so then Jennifer goes to the road commissioners and gets the answers, and then she goes back and gives it all to us. The problem with that is these five answers that you get could very well generate other questions. So if you had ends up creating other questions, then you go through the same process again, uh, which I think is honestly uh, counterproductive. It, it, it's not productive, yeah. you know. What I mean, and we're all volunteers, and we're just trying to. So we'll see what they say this year when uh, we want information, how it's going to work, and all that. But if you see their policy, you can see how it's going to work. Uh, I think it's kind of productive myself, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, that, so that's the way that stuff works, or it has worked. Leslie, won't you? Uh, yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, Leslie, I'm sorry. Yeah. Have, um, what, do, what is MMA's take on that, this particular issue? MMA says that the uh, and I've got an answer from MMA, uh, the Warren Finance Committee works for town meeting, and if it's, covered, if it's not covered in the ordinance, then it's up to the town meeting to either change the ordinance or change the members. What's the MMA? Main Municipal Association. They're the, okay. they're the insurance company for all the municipalities, and uh, they have a bunch of lawyers up there that try to protect the insurance companies. So uh, usually that, that's it. it. We pay so much a year to have that service uh, to belong to them, but uh, that's their answer when all this stuff was going on. Uh, like I said in the beginning, we're a separate entity and we work for the town meeting. Uh, let's see. Is the committee invited, if there are questions for a department, just invited the department head to come in for a meeting? Uh, this is what we tried because, to do in right. the last two years, and the yeah. Slutman 
one time it was what 20 minutes before the meeting we got notified that it's canceled and they told the department heads they couldn't come in and, and they canceled our meeting they, and they canceled our meeting <laughs> <coughs> which is incorrect uh, selectmen do not have the authority to cancel our meeting the selectmen do not have the authority to tell us when we can meet uh, Dennis last year had to uh, go out and uh, request a uh, Mm, what do I want to call it? Uh, Legal interpretation? Uh, yeah, uh, from MMA. And mm -hmm. MMA came back and said, we can meet whenever the chair decides we need to meet. <clears throat> and uh, these selectmen do not have the right to tell us that we can't meet. The selectmen tried to tell us that unless you have a warrant in front of you, there's nothing for you to do. Well, that's not necessarily true. We set our own agenda. We have an organizational meeting that we have to conduct. We have to elect a chair, a vice chair, secretary, uh, decide how this committee is going to operate because the selectmen do not tell us how to operate. However, you know, again, we are only an advisory committee. We were all elected, but again, we only make a recommendation on warrant articles. Beyond that, and if you read the uh, warrant finance ordinance, it's very specific as to what the duties of the warrant finance committee are. Um, they try to, and I'm not throwing rocks at the selectmen, uh, but they at times try to hamstring us a little bit. And this is why uh, I had sent an email to the town administrator about getting the audit. Uh, and I don't know how many got it or whatever, but the, the audit's not going to be done. I think it was the end of October. Uh, for the contract. My personal feelings are how can you make recommendations on financial finances unless you know the past history and what the town has for money you know uh, I know last year the undonated fund balance with revenues and stuff went up about four hundred thousand yeah and with all the building that's going on this past year, with the revenues from excise tax and building permits and this and that, I, I would have no reason not to believe that the revenues probably went up at least that this year, if not more. Uh, which put us last year, a year ago, uh, a little over $2 million in the end days fund balance. Uh, and if that goes up again, what I figure, I assume it probably will, um, this past year, uh, we'd have close to $2.5 million, uh, which is an awful lot of money. And what that tells me is, uh, that we're being overtaxed because that, that it's not being um, contemplating the revenues and stuff. They're underestimating every year what the revenues are by a considerable amount of money. And the only way you're going to know that is by the audit. And that will give you a clear understanding of what we need or what we should be doing. Tom. In terms of the size of the undesignated fund balance, to me that's there for uh, contingency. It's supposed to be three months worth of bills. Okay, that's that's a reasonable number it seems, but 
it's also there to fund capital, capital improvements. No. Well, that's what it's supposed to be. Well, I mean, if you're going to have capital expenditures in the future, the extent to which you know what those are, then you consider what you have today in fund balance, in reserve funds, and what you might need to add to that in order to provide for the funding of ongoing capital renewal. I agree with you 100%. And so that, to me, is the... the, the the basis for how you size that fund. But and, and you may be right, Dennis. Maybe it's too large and we've overtaxed. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why I say that. Because our biggest expense in this town, obviously, is the school. Yeah. You know, and that's not a negative thing about the school. No. Uh, that's our biggest expense. Uh, our fiscal year ends June 30th. We have two months a year, July and August, that the amount of salaries we're paying at the school is very limited. You're paying maintenance staff, <coughs> and, you know, the county staff, the superintendent, like that. Uh, so the payroll for the school for those two months yeah. is greatly reduced. So when they go back to work, in September, and you start paying them again, reality is this big bill is only six weeks before you start collecting property taxes. The auditor would love to see three months' expenses in the end days in fund balance. The town never used to do that. The town used to borrow money twice a year, yeah, sure, sure. uh, 500000 twice a year mm -hmm. to finish out whatever they had to do. And I didn't like borrowing money. So when I was a slutman 10, 12 years ago, uh, we sharpened the pencils and didn't pay some bills near the end. Uh, I obviously got paid the payroll but CMP didn't get their money for a month. Mm -hmm. uh, different things like that, and we ended up, uh, we didn't have to borrow any money. And since then, the revenue's been built up more and more and more and more. And I've got no problems with three months' bills. Mm -hmm. But my problem is the, the anticipated revenues a far way under budgeted. Way. I saw that, yeah. Uh, Leslie. I have a couple of things. Um, Tom, you, meant, you said something about um, capital improvements. Well, if we're gonna, planning on doing capital improvements, those should be in reserve funds, not in the undesignated fund. Exactly. Okay, well, maybe it's a. a, a no, fine. No. I mean, they're all. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still, it's, it's, but, uh, you know, the reserve yeah. account is for money that's dedicated to a specific, specific purpose. Okay. Uh, undesignated would be for, as you said, contingencies. Mm -hmm. um, so and, but that, I, I think Tom's right, Leslie. Yeah. That the money that you put into these reserve funds should come from your excess in your undesignated fund balance. Right, right. But that, that's something that um, that town meeting should be approving, not not just holding that money in an undesignated fund in anticipation of being able to spend it. Um, and um, in, in, in asking for the audit, Dennis, um, they may, be, I'll give them the benefit of maybe they're thinking you want the auditor's report, which won't be ready until the end of that. October. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, but they closed the books December 30th. They should have all of those figures on what was budgeted and what was expended already, and they should be able to give that, that information to us uh, prior to the auditor's report coming out. Yeah, and I, I, and I have no doubt that Michelle has all that information. Yeah. I just didn't I mean, perhaps, perhaps it was they, they weren't clear on what you were actually looking for, because I, I know that the auditor's report is gonna be important, but us having the fig those uh, the book closed figures are important for us to to get a head start coming up on budget season um, because that's an awful lot of data to comprehend. Clarification, please. As far as I know, our fiscal year runs from July 
1st yeah. through yeah. June 30th. They do not close books out in December. No, I know. I understand that they clo they actually closed town town hall, so they could close the books the end of June. So the books were closed. The books are always closed. So, but we we don't. Ha they're not releasing that information. The information to us. doesn't get processed in a timely manner. Just like the town report doesn't contain all the information that it should have in it. So they should have that information available. And they probably do. And, and okay. like I said, I asked for the audit. I think we're getting... If we didn't ask the right question, then we shouldn't be criticizing what the answer was. We need to ask the right question, and then if we don't get the right the information, then that's a different discussion, I think. No, I agree, Bernie. As I say, I'm not criticizing. Okay. Well, I thought I the audit some was are, done. And I think maybe we ought to move on or to a new subject yep. or rather than just repeating the same criticism of something when the, they didn't, you know, if you were ask me for a pizza and you end up with a, uh, a hamburger because somebody else said you wanted a hamburger, I mean, you know, <laughs> Joyce says, Dennis wants a hamburger and I come in with a hamburger, but you really wanted a pizza, it's not my fault, she told me a hamburger. Right. I mean, that it sounds like that's what happened to me. No, they did Potentially. exactly what I asked for okay. and I wasn't ready. Right. Um, I would like to ask you to please go back and reread, if you would, the the process about speaking with department heads. Their policy. Yeah, would you? Because I, I just want to make sure I understand the whole thing. Thanks. Which part did you want me to do the whole thing? Now? Well, I okay. I understand if we if we want information, we are to go to you, and then you're to go to the town administrator. Yes. And then from that part on, please, what happens then? <clears throat> Let's see. Any member of the warrant finance may make a request for information of any department in the town to the chair of the Warren Finance Committee. The Slutmen have waived the need for the Warren Finance Committee to vote on said request. The chair of the Warren Finance Committee shall then contact the town administrator and share the request of his or her fellow committee members. The town administrator will immediately begin working on the request and does not need to wait for Slutman approval. Once the information is gathered, the town administrator will email all information requested to the entire Warren Finance Committee, Board of Selectmen, and any, any department head that information pertains to. If the Warren Finance Committee member prefers a hard copy of the information, he or she can make a blanket request at the beginning of, of their term to the town administrator to have their documents mailed to them at their home. The Board of Selectmen encourages communication between the Warren Finance Committee, their liaisons, and the various department heads and committee chairs within the town. This policy is intended to ensure all information and documents requested by any town department or committee are distributed to all members of the Warren Finance. It is not intended to prohibit communications. In an effort to maintain transparency and abide by the freedom of information laws, Meetings with the department heads or committee chairs shall be held at a properly posted meeting where all members of the Warren Finance Committee are afforded the right to attend. Does that clarify things for you, Bernie? Well, it, it does, but that last sentence is what I really wanted to get at, which is, to me, that suggests that a department head could come in and meet with us as long as the committee is present. As and, long and, as and the selectmen me, approve okay. that. Okay, I'd like to finish my sentence, please. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Bernie. It's all right. Um, this practice, I don't know that it's done at all municipalities, but it is consistent with other municipalities I've lived in. And I think that I understand the frustration of we have to ask a question through the town administrator and then it goes and it comes back. Conversely, though, um, if we were talking earlier about particular bents on what was said or how it was said, you know, if, if two things, 
if we're all free to go talk to town employees and department heads and so forth at will, we all choose to do that. They could spend a lot of time talking to eight different people about the same issue. And how they respond to me might be different in terms of how they respond to you. And so then if I come into the meeting and say, well, I know what they're thinking about this because I talked to them and this is what they said. You're getting my interpretation of what they said. Um, and it may actually differ factually from what they say to someone else on the committee because maybe they don't trust me. Maybe they don't like me. Or maybe they don't like you. So I do see the value in terms of time management to not having eight different people feel free to go talk to an employee whenever they want and to having <coughs> everything come through the same filter. So <coughs> I just put that out there for consideration that I think there may be some positive, constructive reasons for it being done this way. That's all. Oh. That I, have I, I, I think you're, you're right. There are reasons going in because there was people getting this different information. Um, the only issue that I ever had with any of it, Bernie, was if, if you if you <coughs> take your time and you watch past meetings, I try very hard to make sure that everybody has all the information that I have, you know, everybody. And I try very hard to allow everybody to give their opinions and what their thoughts are on, on things. My issue was, like I said in the very beginning, the last two years, the slotmen have refused to let any of their employees come and sit here and have a conversation with us. And that, that's my only issue with this whole policy thing. I work very hard to try to send all my emails and everybody's emails to the town administrator and follow the process like they want you to do. And, and I'm fine with trying to do that. But I don't think it's right that they don't let town employees, department heads, fire chief or whoever, uh, sit down and have a conversation with us, unless they say it's okay. Well, and that's then, my issue. Okay, and I, I don't disagree with you. Um, so what I would put out there is I think the remedy to that is for other people to run for the board that would do it differently or to make sure that at the meeting that the public knows. Yeah. This is the way this is handled and why you think it should be different. But I guess that's what I'm trying to do here with yeah. us is, yeah. is so yeah. everybody understands where we have so many new members, uh, how it's been working and what some of the challenges are. Tom. Perhaps one way of handling it. Uh, how did you refer to the, uh, the originating, was it articles that formed this committee? What was it called? The ordinance. The ordinance. I suspect you could uh, put a, a warrant together that would amend those. Yeah. And it would describe what the procedure should be for this committee to interact so it can carry out its business yeah. with the town employees and present it to the town. And if they approve it, then it seems to me that gives us the authority to then follow that without consideration by others. So we'll move on from that. Oh, sorry. There's only one problem. What? <clears throat> the selectmen write to warrant. You cannot put anything on the warrant without it going through the selectmen. <laughs> That's okay. the one problem. Okay. okay? All right. We do not write warrants. We don't write articles. Okay. It's not within our purview. Joy. I would, I would just suggest since this has kind of gone out there, that um, you all have your phones, go to Google, go to State of Maine Law, and I, I actually did this today, I, I wish I remembered everything I read, but there is state law on warrant and finance. What your responsibilities are, <coughs> what your 
obligations are, and what your authority is. When, and if you can base what you need. Excuse me just a minute. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. If, if you can base a citizen's petition on state law, then it has to move forward, even if it means calling a special town meeting. So there are there are remedies. I agree with you. There are there, definitely there, ways. There are there are famous. remedies, rather than saying, "Well, you know, Bernie's not going to let me play because last time I played ball with him, I broke his bat." We know that's going to happen. You know, there are remedies that we can move forward on much more quickly than just dissecting, dissecting, dissecting. Just a thought. And I want to be very clear. This is not a criticism of the Board of Selectmen. I am just stating <coughs> facts on past practices. And, uh, yeah, let's see, I'm gonna pass them down. I'm sorry, I should have got these in the beginning. Get there. Uh, I've got three, I need one more. Like I said, it's not a criticism. Uh, I just don't want everybody to think that Did I miss anybody? I've already got that one. That's okay. Yeah, this is a um, What the heck is this thing? Oh. Um Moving on, Jennifer, being the town administrator, said that the law um, is very clear that as elected officials that we need to uh, understand under the freedom uh, of access law. Okay. We, we need to understand that, and um, there's a page in the back um, that needs to be filled out and uh, turned back to her. Um, we can, I mean, I've been through all this several times, so I, it's a lot to read, but. Um, <coughs> Take it home and go through it and sign it. And uh, drop it off in the, out in the hall. There's a Warren Finance Committee mailbox. And if you drop it off in that box, uh, <coughs> then we'll see uh, how many people have done it. And the ones that don't, haven't, I'll contact them. And, Say that we really need to get that done. I don't really think we should have all this tonight unless the committee really wants to. You know, everybody agree with that? No. You don't agree? With that? You want to do it tonight? No. Okay. I have a question for you. As a duly elected board by the town meeting, Everything we have to do with is town business. <coughs> That's the right way to put it, is town business. Why aren't the books open to us? Why do we have to go through an FOI to get the information we need? I don't know. I don't know that we really do. I mean, I cannot believe that a select board or a town administrator would need to go through FOI to get information on things that they need and being a duly elected board by the town I'm I, I, it's it's a I'm not arguing any points I just don't understand why it's 
necessary for because any public record we have is a public record. It should be open to us. And why do you need an FOI for a public record? Because that's the way. No, no, no. no I don't want to go there. I, I'm not going to say that's the way they want it. That's the way the entire world is now. No, no, no. It's not. Though. It's not. But it's not. The books are not open, Joyce. The books are never open. Public Ever. information. What do you mean they're not open? Of course they are. Unless you request it officially, you're not going to get it. Here's our chairman. Why can't he request it? It's if, public information. Have you got you should be specific. able to. You should be able to go into any place and say, "I would like to see the tax. I would like to see the tax book. I'm looking for lot 207, map such and such, such and such." And you should be able to. Here it is. It's public information. But I don't. What's what's generating your question? Is there something that the committee has asked for that we're told we have to do a FOIA request to get? Well, the idea that we so many hoops, a lot of hoops, Bernie, a lot of hoops to jump through, and why would we? What? I mean, I think this is about us understanding FOIA so that we understand transparency and what people are entitled to that we might not want to give, for example? I don't well, it, it, might, it, it might be that... I mean, the government because, has to complete this. You know, it might be that I've, I've been through this before. I just don't see the connection to this particular board, why it is a, a necessary thing. Okay, because... Maybe I misunderstood your question. I thought you were saying or suggesting that you have asked for public records and been denied. No, I wasn't saying that at all. Okay, maybe I misunderstood. Because you're saying the public records, public record. Well, a public record is, is, is uh, truly a public record, isn't it? Right. So is there a problem that people are asking for public records that they're being told no? I have no way. Okay, there you go. What does that have to do with us? I believe the thing says under Maine state statute, mm -hmm. all elected officials must comply with this. I didn't read that. I believe that's what it says. I could be wrong. I've been wrong many, many times. Are you sure? And I'm sure I'll be wrong again. So, Joyce is on the first, the, the very top, first page, number five. Looks like <coughs> it was highlighted. <clears throat> it says municipal officers, clerks, treasurers, assessors, and budget committee members of municipal governments. They're part of the groups that must complete the training. Okay, then that puts it in a very different. Um, thank you, Leslie, for pointing that out. I did not see that. I did not see um, why it had us looking for information. I took this from us looking for information from who did you use the road committee saying no, you can't. You know, you got to go through, you know, the town administrator to oh, get the okay. information. Okay. I took it as <clears throat> another thing in that same vein, and it's. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand yeah. now. Okay. Now with Leslie pointing this out, this is just another piece of bureaucracy in uh, that we have to deal with. Right. It's sent down by the state. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> sorry. Nothing to be sorry about. I am anyway. Okay. Well, it's also this also governs um, public proceedings and creating public records, which we do. Well, that we do. So that's part of this. Too. Okay. Yeah. That okay. we absolutely do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Next, please. With with that, does anybody, after listening to me tonight, have any questions or concerns, or uh, whatever that they want? Brought forward uh, for the town administrator as well. Any questions? Uh, 
question. <clears throat> I'd like you to reframe your, your question when you asked for the audit. Yeah. I would, I would like you to, add, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this properly, um, to ask for the budget information, expenditure, um, expenditures, uh, budgeted and, and expenditures. The treasurer's end of the year report? End of the year, yes. I, Is that okay? I believe that. I, I think at this stage, those are probably draft financial statements. If, if I understand the process, they, the town administrator or the treasurer has probably drafted a set of financial statements and the auditors are reviewing those. So, but typically it's not uncommon for the governing board to, or finance committees to receive a copy of those drafts prior to them, the official audit being done. It seems to me that's what you're after. That's what, that's, the, that's what I'd the like draft, to see. The draft financial statements that they would have prepared that will eventually make their way into the auditor's final report. Yeah. Because the, the official auditor report, we know, is not going to be finished yeah, until October. October. Yeah. And, and so and that's really, I mean, that's, that's a piece that we're going to need, but we, we'd like to have the... Financial statements. The draft. Draft. Draft financial statements. Draft. That's, that's, what I, that's the term I would use. From the treasurer. I, presumably the treasurer prepares those. I, I assume that she would. And what she would. Do you want to say the date? For was to uh, present to the auditor. Anyway. Yeah, for for the yeah. for the end of the um, for for the fiscal year yeah, for, that just as ended. Yeah, June thirty, two thousand twenty-one. Yeah. Bernie. Nope. That's that's it. I just thought the date was important. Yeah. Yeah. For the year 2021. Yeah, I, I think that'll reframe the question to get the information that we actually are looking for at this point. Yeah. I wasn't aware when I asked for it, honestly, that uh, they had a contract that didn't, until the end of October. I, I, I noticed last year's statements were issued on October 23rd. The auditors issued their opinion on October 23rd. So that gives yep. you a sense that they'll probably do something similar this year. Yep. I'm sure it's the same thing, probably the same verbatim contract. Mm -hmm. So I'll send that. So the, what do you, what do you as a committee want to do about another meeting? Uh, do you want to, wait and so we start getting budget stuff in January no would you want to hopefully repeat review receive the financial statements and maybe the audit and it'll give you a chance to go over stuff and uh, have a workshop on the finances uh, of last year <coughs> and working with the warrant articles that we proved at town meeting and to see what the... I think that would be very good since we do have a, a, a number of new members. I mean, I mean there, is, there is going to be a learning curve that we want to get a, a, ahead of before we actually get into the actual budget season. Yeah. So I would rather do that prior, you know, you know, get a good feeling of, of what we're actually looking at prior to looking at, at the articles for next town meeting. Is, <clears throat> typically a budget process would have a calendar and it would lay out, you know, when do you start? What are the various steps along the way? So the, answering your question, if I had a, a calendar of, you know, when things will occur, when documents will be ready, that would tell me at what point perhaps we want to start our process. In the, in the past few years anyway, um, I'm going to tell you how it works at the school. That's the easiest for me. <coughs> Department heads turning the budgets into the superintendent, uh, hopefully by the end of December. Okay. The Superintendent looks over the budgets, meets with the departments individually and whatever, and says this is what we can do or what we can't do or whatever. And 
Then he comes up with a plan, whatever the dip for all the different departments, what the dollar amounts, working with the bookkeeper, and um, and they usually start their actual deliberations in February, and hopefully uh, they have their final vote on them in March for the April town meeting special town meeting in April. In that process, we would meet with them okay. and make our recommendations. And But we don't make a recommendation on the warrant articles and because what we're doing is making a recommendation um, really what the school board wants. So it, we don't make them before they make theirs. You know what I mean? Uh, that's the way it works at the school. The town last year, <clears throat> I think budgets were due, and I might be wrong, but I think they were due in January. I see. And the departments met with the uh, slutmen, went over the budgets, and the slutmen said what they could have and what they couldn't have and what they were willing to do. And end of February, I believe any zone of ordinances, or maybe it's the first of February, uh, needs to be in, and hopefully we make our recommendations if things go well sometime in April. I see. First part of May. That's the way it's done. How they'll do it this so year. So it's really December, January through, yes. through April yeah. is when the bulk of the work is yeah. done. I see. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So with that being said. One thing we didn't do, and I apologize, is, uh... There's your calendar. Oh, nice. You're doing good there, Joyce. Thank you. I'm proud of you. That's you can read that if you wish. Uh, budget timeline. Yeah. Fiscal 21-22 budget. Initial request due all departments, social services. Monday, February 1st. Hmm. Notice of potential ordinance article to town administrator February 5th. Final ordinance articles due February 26th. Joint meeting BOS Morton Finance Saturday March 6th or by Zoom. Final warrant finance final recommendations due April 16th. Selectman sign warrant April 28th weren't to be posted April 30th, town meeting, elections on June 8th, the meeting <coughs> itself June 12th, that Saturday, June 12th. Now my question is, that, that timeline was, was published. Yeah. Did they meet that timeline? Yes. They did, okay. Well this is, this is, uh, well this was last year's so, right. No, I understand. I, you know, I understand. I, that's why I was wondering if they actually, uh, if those deadlines, you know, were well, cast in stone. If you remember, stone. because of COVID, right, things did go over a couple of times. <coughs> realistically, we, so, we, met the, we met the deadline. Um, my my only concern is, um, you know, I, and I have granted this is my first year on the board, but I ha I do watch. In the past, I have watched the meetings, and and I know that um, there were times when um, Morton Finance seemed to not get the information on a timely basis, and possibly were rushed uh, and pushed to make decisions. Is that true, or is that not true? I don't think it's been the case uh, in the last few years. Do you wrong? Yes. Okay. I was wrong. Well, I, as far I, I, as I'm concerned. Warren Finance is always pushed. Um, I understand, you know, that sometimes there are things that, you know, get in the way as far as, you know, uh, information being provided in a timely manner. But uh, there are times when I think that, uh, you know, it could have been handled better. Uh, do I have any ideas? how to change it no not really yeah because i don't want to see us in a position where 
information doesn't get to us um, in time for us to adequately deliberate and, and re do our research and due diligence. That's what I don't want to see. That's, you know, most definitely. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, we're not going to get any information until after December. You're, yeah, you're just it doesn't not sound like there is any. Uh, now, do we want to meet? Before then, I would say yes, most definitely. You know, I, I wouldn't be opposed to, uh, you know, having a a, a workshop uh, of us uh, in a month's time. I don't know how y'all feel, but it doesn't bother me in the least. You know, I think the more times that we meet, the more times we discuss things, the better off that everybody will be as far as understanding the process. Right, and like I said, there, there's so many uh, new members that yeah. don't know exactly what the process is. I think that, that it would behoove us to, to try to get ahead of the curve. I certainly agree. It'll you know. streamline the process when it comes crunch time. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and, and there will be crunch time. <laughs> I mean, we could, one example would be, I guess, is we could go over last year's warrant. Mm -hmm. 